Now that we have Backtrack 2 installed, we're going to go ahead and install Ubuntu. We're going to pop in our live CD and we're going to select Install Ubuntu. Now once it boots up, it's really a pretty straightforward installation. Uh, on your desktop, there's going to be an install icon. You just go ahead and click that. The Ubuntu installation is a very straightforward installation. You just go through it like you would any other. Uh, you select language, time zones, that type of stuff. Here, when it comes to selecting where we're going to be putting this, uh, you want to make sure you use the use the largest continuous free space because that's going to put that on the fourth partition that we created so we don't overwrite uh, the other two operating systems. This just gives you an option to pull over some information. Now here you just have to go ahead and put in your name, your login name, your password, and the name of your computer on your network. Alright, here this is kind of important. You want to check to make sure that it's actually putting it where you want it. You can see that extended 3 partition. It's going to be creating a fifth and sixth partition, uh, and then extended partition and swap. And then you just want to let it install, obviously. Now, towards the end of the installation of Ubuntu, uh, it's going to go ahead and install Grub, which is a bootloader. It's a really nice bootloader that comes with Ubuntu, which can go ahead and search your hard disk and find those other operating systems you have installed. So uh, you have an easy way to select which operating system you want to boot, in, boot into. And just go ahead and restart. All right, now that Ubuntu is installed and we're restarting here, uh, you're going to see Grub here. Uh, first, we're going to go into Backtrack just to do some basic configurations. Now, Backtrack's loading just fine here, but if you do get a fatal error, you're going to have to boot into your live Backtrack CD, and um, we're going to show you what you need to change so you don't get that fatal error. All right, now that we got Backtrack 2 booted up, first we're going to make sure that it's activated that swap file that we created with Ubuntu. Um, to do that, you open up the console and you type free. If under total it says zero by swap, what you need to, uh, the command you need to run is swap on, and then the location of that last partition, which is the swap partition, which is slash dev slash HDA6. All right, now that we've done that, we're gonna configure the uh, Grub bootloader config file from the um, Ubuntu partition. Alright, we're going to go ahead and scroll down, and if you're getting that fatal error we talked about, you're going to have root equals current here, and you want to change it to what we have. And as you could see, when we did boot up through Grub, there was a lot of extra um, things you could boot into. We're going to go ahead and clean that up, so we only have our three main operating systems. We're going to clean up the titles for all the operating systems. We're just going through and commenting out things that we feel that we don't need. And if you need to ever get back into there, you can always go back and uncomment that out. Alright, so go ahead and save that after we've done our editing. Just hit Control X and then Y to save. Alright, now that we're not booting off a live CD, we're going to go ahead and change our root password. To do so, all you do is type passwd space root, and then you just enter in the new uh, root password. Now we're going to go ahead and edit the boot up screen for Backtrack 2. It's located at slash etc slash issue. 
and we're just going to clean it up because, I mean, we all know how to boot up Backtrack, so we're going to change it. We're just going to take it all out of there. We are going to leave the first little bit of code there. That's going to make the text green, so when we log in, it's, it's we're typing in green just, just for fun. And now we're just going to log out and show you how that little bit of extra code we left um, makes our login green. I like green. I like green too, Greg. Alright, now that we have that all configured, um, we're going to boot back into XP, and when it first boots up after you've changed up all the partitions, it's going to kind of freak out at you, so it's got to do a full scan disk, just to make sure you didn't lose anything. Now that we're booted back up into XP, we're going to go to the Disk Manager again. Now that third partition that we created uh, as our shared partition between the Linux and Windows operating systems, um, you're going to have to delete that and reformat it as FAT32. Um, make sure you choose the right one here because you don't want to delete one of your operating systems that you've already installed. Also, we're going to do it as FAT32 because NTFS, um, it's not going to be as stable when you're going between the two operating systems. You're going to change the volume label to shared, obviously. Do a quick format if you want. And there you have it. And as you can see, our shared appears on Windows. Alright, now we're going to boot into Ubuntu to show you how to access that from the other operating system. Alright, now that we're booted into Ubuntu, you just go ahead and click on that shared drive. It's going to ask you for your administrator password to mount it. And there you have it. Now that shared drive is going to allow you to share files between the two operating systems without much trouble. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so that's it for our episode on triple booting. We will be making a vlog on how to dual boot your computer with Windows XP or Vista and Backtrack 2, just in case you're unsure on how to do that. I'm Patchy, this is Knox.